I'm Matthew from Light and Matter. I found an interesting question from a viewer when I checked my email this morning. He asked basically whether it's possible to simulate a reverse neutral density filter in Lightroom. He had looked for a way to do it and ended up doubting that it was possible. The good news is that it is possible, but before I explain how it's done, let me just clarify what a reverse neutral density filter is. Most of us are familiar with a standard graduated neutral density filter. They're dark at the edge of the frame and get lighter and taper off to being clear somewhere in the middle of the frame, which is helpful for darkening skies and that sort of thing. A split reverse neutral density filter does the opposite. It's darkest in the center of the frame somewhere, and then it gradually gets lighter as it nears one edge, and it has a soft edge on the opposite side. These are mostly used when photographing landscapes with wide-angle lenses when the sun is on the horizon. So the horizon is very bright, but the rest of the image, and especially the foreground, is pretty dark. I couldn't find a great example to work with um, in my photo archives here, so I'll just use this image to demonstrate the technique. I think it'll work just fine. Most people get stuck, I think, in trying to figure out how to do this with only one gradient, but it requires two, and once you know that, it's pretty simple. To start off, select the gradient tool, and then set the exposure down about two stops, or however much you think you'll need. I'll just go minus two. And then place the gradient so that the effect is how you want it above the horizon ignoring the fact that below the horizon, it's going to be way too dark. So I'll put this up here, like so. Now create a second gradient, but set this one at positive two stops and apply it over the bottom of the image. Order of operation isn't important in Lightroom. All of these parametric changes are calculated and then applied to the image at the end. So these two gradients truly cancel each other out at the bottom of the frame. There's no image degradation by pushing and pulling on those pixels. And of course, there's a lot more flexibility with the edges of the gradient when you're doing it digitally, which is nice. The gradients don't have to be parallel, and you can make the bottom edge harder or softer depending on what suits your image. Let me hide these overlays for a moment. And this is the before and after. Here's the after, obviously, and the before. So this is probably a little bit more dramatic than I would do in, in real life, but I think this shows uh, at least how it works. And that's about it. I hope some of you found this helpful, and if any of you have additional questions, feel free to contact me here through YouTube, or of course through my website, lightandmatter.org.